my name is Steven Crane, and this is my tutorial on how to use the ACK level editor for Fight the Dragon. So, just to start creating levels, you just go to this little create sign, interact with it. By the way, I am using a controller, so all the user interface that you will see for this will be for uh, a gamepad, uh, specifically Xbox One controller, um, but it is also interfaceable with a keyboard. Um, anyways, so, what you're going to see here is all of your published adventures. As you can see, I don't have uh, any adventures currently published. Um, I've got them all currently in the working progress. So, if you've started a level already, and you come up to this screen, and you're like, well, I'm not finding my level, um, that is because if you have not published them, they won't show up in the screen. You have to actually go to start editing, which is the same way as if you are to start a new level. So hop in there, and then if you've already started on your level, what you're going to do is going to go to your adventures um, and hit the load button on the upper left hand corner. Um, also, if you're at the end of a level and you want to save it, and you don't know how, it's once again under this, your adventures, you just go to save and you enter in the name and you go from there. New, you, it's just a new map, um, which is effectively what you start out with right here. Um, but as you can see, if I go to the load, you have one of my current levels that I had been working on um, that is unpublished, um, which is why it didn't show up in the other screen. Um, so if you've already worked on a level and you've saved it and you left it and you're coming back to it, this is where you will find it. Uh, so let's get in here. So everything on this menu bar is drop down base meaning you have to select it and then you can kind of go from there and select other things if you want to go back to it you have to press start to go back to it you can't go up or down you do have to press b so it's very much um, select and deselect based um, which is a little weird a um, little finicky a lot of people think that you can just like go up or down on the menu but you actually have to select um, one of these options before you can drop down and you actually have to back out to go up a tier. Um, so just to get used to that, that's what you have to do. Um, you, to start out with, um, you have all these tabs up here, um, which are your overall hierarchies. Um, you have design, which is pretty much the landscape. You have props, which are things that you can populate your world with, uh, use for set design, etc. Um, entities, which are um, like your start, checkpoint, uh, end, as well as enemies. Here, I'll look these up. So, for the design, like I said, landscape, it's land, water, deep water, um, various types of terrain, etc. Uh, props, you have your interactive, destructible, chess, static, bridges, your steps, your decals, your spawners, your effects, um, entities, you have your spawn location, which is what you currently see on the screen. It's that circle with the double arrow. Um, one of those arrows is, I want to say, yeah, the green one is the one where the camera's facing, um, which you can rotate however you want. And the purple one is the direction that the player will be facing when they spawn in. Um, then you have your enemies for all of your enemy placement. You have your finish line, which is the little, like, obelisk. Um, and then you have your checkpoint, which is, like, another little ruin circle thing where when you step on it, it activates your checkpoint. Um, then you get logic. Uh, this is for visual scripting within the engine. Um, we won't get into that in this uh, tutorial or many of these things. just kind of want to go over the generic hierarchy. Um, but this is where you can get into a lot of like creative stuff. Um, but it does take a little bit more than just placing things in world. You do have to kind of think things out. And some of the logic is a little bit buggy, um, specifically around the randomize. Um, I've had it freeze my game a couple times, so it's a little bit more touchy to use, but it is still very usable. It still does what it's supposed to. Um, it's just setting it up can sometimes be a pain. Uh, then you have your NPCs, which are your actual NPC characters, or characters that you place in the world. You have your signposts, you have your uh, lecterns, which are books on pedestals, you have just books, and then uh, invisible NPCs. Uh, after that you have VFX, which are visual effects, so you have your time of day and your environment effects. So time of day is literally like the lighting, uh, 
So you can either have it fix time or set it to a natural progression of time, um, or you can just select a time of day and leave it at whatever that is. You can also change time of day in the triggers under logic. Um, I'll show you that in a later video, um, something that kind of took me a bit to figure out. Um, you can only change it with triggers, you can't change them with any other logic, so just heads up on that. Um, then for the environment effects, it has like rain, snow, leaves, god rays, dust cloud, and then um, the intensity of those, so you can either make it very light or very noticeable by having it on high. Um, you can kind of use a range for that. Um, then you have your music, which is just the theme musics that play in the background. You can select one, and then you can always change uh, that with logic. Um, so you can always do that. And then you have your playtest. You do have to playtest your map before actually uh, publishing it. Um, it's required uh, that if you go in and make any change at all, that you do have to go back and then playtest it again to be able to then publish it or update a publish. Um, and they kind of do that just to make sure that each level is completable. Um, however, that doesn't mean that if a player goes off on some secondary path that they can't get stuck, um, you do still need to test for that and make sure that that works, um, because that's not part of the requirement to uh, pass a submission. So I've come across a couple maps where like you'll go into a world, you'll go off to look for secrets, and you'll get stuck and you can't complete it because then you're stuck on some side path or whatever um, that the publisher didn't completely think through or didn't spot or notice. Um, so you do have to look out for that. It only tests that you can get from the start to the finish um, to be able to publish it. Um, then you have your dashboard, which is just your main screen. You also have any of your adventures, which are already kind of gone over. You have your load, save, uh, new, and publish. This is where you'll publish it once you've playtested it. It changes that orange from an orange to a white, uh, allowing or showing you that you're allowed to then publish the map. Um, and then you have your campaigns, which are adventures that are strung together from start to finish. So if you beat one level, it unlocks the next level, unlocks the next level, so on and so forth. The thing about campaigns uh, to watch out for is you cannot add published levels to campaigns. They have to be unpublished levels to be added to a campaign, and you can't add to already published campaigns. So you do have to go through and do the entire campaign before publishing the campaign, and you can't add levels that you've previously created and submit or published. Um, but however, you can go back and edit um, levels that are a part of a campaign that you've published. So if you go through, you make five levels in a campaign, which is your maximum. You can only have five levels. Um, you can always go back and touch up, re-edit, um, fix things, whatever, to specific levels within that campaign. But it does have to be published as an entire campaign to be published. It's a little confusing there, I know, um, but it's something just heads up. Don't want you to go through, make a level, publish it, and then find out that you can't put it in your campaign. So that's pretty much it for the uh, your adventures and campaigns. Then you just have your generic settings, your help, which brings you to the Google page, and your... Um, uh, visibilities so you can see different uh, aspects on your UI here um, and then exit so that's gonna be it for this uh, tutorial uh, the next one kind of go over lands landscaping a little bit more um, and then we'll go from there so thank you for watching and